Well, hello, everybody. Mr. Mack here. Uh, I'm going to begin a new book. Um, and I, to, this is a fairly new book to me. Uh, it was, well, I was getting ready to say I discovered it. I didn't discover it. It was presented to uh, my class. It was presented to my class and, and me uh, at the beginning of this year. And uh, the, we had a copy of it, and the kids... Uh, borrowed it, uh, took turns and borrowed it, and just loved the book. I took it over Christmas break and tore it up. I couldn't put it down, and it's become one of my all-time favorite books. It's written by Gordon Corman. It's called Restart. Um, some of you may have already read it. That's, you know, I'm sure. Um, I'm guessing that you found it to be quite an awesome book, too. Uh, and even if you have already read it, uh, stay with me anyway. Uh, reading a good book more than once is amazing. People think, oh, I've already read it. Read it again. I read the Harry Potter series nine times. I read the Deathly Hallows alone 11 just because I love the story. I love, it's like re reconnecting with old friends. Not to mention that you, you see things, you hear things, you smell things, you taste things. You use all your senses when you're a reader. Um, that I never saw or smelled, or tasted, or touched, or whatever before, every time I read a new book. So, even if you've read this book, stay with me. Uh, sit, get some brownies, cup of tea, glass of milk. Sit down, listen to old Mr. Mac read you this most amazing story. Um, I'm going to start right away. And uh, I think you're going to enjoy this. Uh, I really do. It's a good story. Chapter 1 is called Chase Ambrose. I remember falling, at least I think I do, or maybe that's just because I fell. The grass is far away and till it isn't anymore. Somebody screams, wait, that's me. I brace for impact, but it never comes. Instead, everything just stops. The sun goes out, the world around me disappears, and I'm being shut down like a machine. Does this mean I'm dead? Blank. Throughout the book, throughout many good books, there are these time jumps. Oh, well, right there, there's a time jump. The light is harsh, fluorescent, it's painful. I squeeze my eyes shut, but I just can't keep it out. It's an explosion. Voices are babbling all around me. You can't mistake the excitement. He's awake. Get the doctor. They said he'd never... Oh, Chase! Doctor, I try to make out who's there, but the light is just killing me. I thrash around blankly, wildly. Everything on my body hurts, especially my neck and my left shoulder. Blurry images come into focus. There's people everywhere, standing and sitting in chairs. I'm lying down. There's a sheet over me, white, which makes the brightness even worse. I raise my hands to cover my face, and then I realize I'm tangled in wires and, and tubing. A clip is on my finger, and it's tethered to a beeping machine next to my bed. And there's an IV oh, hanging from a pole beside it. Oh, thank God! The lady beside me is choked with emotion. I can see her better now. Long brown hair, dark rimmed glasses. When we found you lying there... That's all she can manage before she breaks down crying, and a much younger guy puts his arm around her. A white-coated doctor bursts into the room. Welcome back, Chase! And he exclaims and picks up my chart, uh, my clipboard at the foot of my bed. How do you feel? How do I feel? <laughs> like I've been punched and kicked all over every inch of my body. But that's not the worst part. How am I supposed to feel when nothing, nothing's making sense? Where am I? I demanded. Why am I in a hospital? And who are these people? The lady with the glasses gasps. Chase, honey, she says in a nervous voice. It's, it's me, Mom. Mom, doesn't she think I know my own mother? I've never seen you before in my life, I bluster. My mother is... 
my mother is, and that's when it happens. I reach back for an image of my mom, but I come up totally empty. Ditto, dad, or home, or friends, or school, or anything. It's a blank. It's the craziest feeling. I remember how to remember, but when I actually try to do it, I'm a blank. I'm like a computer with its hard drive wiped clean. You can reboot it, and operating system works just fine, but when you look for a document or a file to open, there's nothing there. Not even my own name. Uh, am I, I'm Chase, I ask. And while my mother, uh, my, and while my other questions sent murmurs of shock around my hospital bed, this one greeted me with silent resignation. My eyes fall on the chart in the doctor's hands, and on the back of the clipboard is written Ambrose, comma, Chase. Who am I? A mirror, I exclaim. Somebody, just give me a mirror. Um, perhaps you're not ready for that, the doctor says in a soothing tone. The last thing I'm in the mood for is to be soothed. A mirror, I snap. The lady who calls herself mom fumbles through her pocketbook and hands me a makeup compact. I open it up, whew, blow away the makeup, and I stare at my reflection. A stranger stares back at me. Time jump. Amnesia. That's what Dr. Cooperman says I have. Acute retrograde amnesia. The loss of all memory prior to a certain event. In this case, me taking a swan dive off the roof of our house. I know what amnesia is, I tell him. So how come I remember a random word like that, amnesia? but I can't remember my own name, my own family, or why I was climbing on the roof. Why? That I can answer, supplies the younger guy, who turns out to be my older brother, Johnny, a college student home for the summer. Your room has that big dormer window. You just open it up and crawl out onto the eaves. You've been doing it for as long as you can remember. <laughs> Did anybody warn me I might break my neck? Oh, only since you were about six, my mother puts it. I figured if you survived this long, it was time to stop worrying. You were such an athlete. And her voice trails off. Amnesia can be an unpredictable thing, the doctor says. Especially with a traumatic injury like this one. We're just starting to understand which parts of the brain control which life functions. But for all we know, it has nothing to do with geography. Some patients lose long-term memory, and some lose short-term memory. In your case, the damage seems totally confined to your sense of who you are and what happened in your life up to the point of the accident. Huh, lucky me, I say bitterly. Cooperman raises his eyebrow. Hey, don't knock it. You remember more than you realize. You can walk, you can talk, you can swallow, and you can go to the bathroom. How would you like to have to relearn everything? Even how to put on uh, shoes, how to put on pants, how to put one foot in front of the other. The bathroom part is definitely an upgrade. They say I was in a coma for four days before I woke up. I can't say how the bathroom side of things was taken care of during that time, but I'm pretty sure I had nothing to do with it. Maybe I'm better off not knowing. The doctor checks a few readings on my monitor, making notes on my chart, and then regards me intently. Hmm. Chase, are you absolutely certain you can't remember anything at all from your life before you regain consciousness? Are you sure? Once again, I, I peer back into the nothingness. That's where my memory is supposed to be. It's like reaching into a pocket for something that should be there but isn't. Only that something isn't keys or a phone. It's your whole life. It's bewildering and frustrating and terrifying all at the same time. 
Try harder, I tell myself. Try harder, I push myself. You just didn't whoosh into being when you came out of the coma. You're in there somewhere. Find you. A vague image starts to form, so I bear down, concentrating with all my might, trying to wrestle it into focus. What is it? Johnny asked breathlessly. <coughs> At last, the details sharpen into view. I see a little girl, maybe four years old, wearing a blue dress with white lace. She seems to be standing in some kind of a garden. At least, she's surrounded by greenery, anyway. Well, uh, there's this girl, uh, I begin telling them, struggling to get keep the picture in my head. Girl? Cooperman turns to his mother. Um, does Chase have a girlfriend? I don't think so, Mom said. No, it, it isn't like that, I insist. This is a little kid. She's like four. Helene? My mother asks. The name means nothing to me. Who's Helene? Dad's kid, Johnny, supply, uh, Johnny supplies our half-sister. Dad? Sister? I search for the connection between these words and the memories they should trigger, but my mind is a black hole. There might be a lot in there, but I just can't get it out. Are the two of them close? Cooperman asks. Mom makes a face. Psh, doctor. After the accident, my ex-husband came to shout and accuse and punch the emergency room wall. Have you seen him here since then, while his son lay in a coma? That should give you an idea of the relationship between my boys and their father and his new family. I don't know any Helene, I volunteer. But you can't go by me because I don't know anybody. This is just a little blonde girl in a blue dress with white lace, kind of dressed up like maybe she's going to church or something, but why I remember her and nothing else, I, I can't tell you. Definitely not Helene, Mom concludes. She has dark hair like her mother. I turn to the doctor. Am I going crazy? <laughs> of course not, he replies. In fact, this little blonde girl suggests that your memory isn't gone at all. It's only your ability to access it that's been changed or damaged. I believe that your missing life will come back to you, or at least some of it will. This girl might be the key. Hmm. Now, I want you to keep thinking about her, who she is and why she's so important, that you remember her when everything else has disappeared. You know, I do honestly try, but there are too many other things going on. Now that I'm not dead, the hospital is suddenly in a big hurry to get rid of me. Dr. Cooperman runs tests on every part of me except my left earlobe. Turns out my brain may be short-circuited, but the rest of me still works pretty good. So, oh, Doc, how come I ache all over? I hurt everywhere. Muscular is his diagnosis. From the fall, or should I say, and he chuckles at his own joke, the sudden stop at the bottom. <laughs> uh, tack on 96 hours of complete inactivity, and you stiffen all over, it's perfectly normal, it'll pass. My only real injuries are a concussion and a separated left shoulder. Turns out my bad diving form saved my life. My shoulder hit the ground a split second before my head, absorbing just enough of my hand landing, of my hard landing, sorry, to keep the impact from killing me. Mom brings clothes for me to change into. I suppose I shouldn't be blown away that they fit. They're my clothes, after all. But, of course, they're new to me. I can't help wondering if I have a favorite shirt or a super broken-in pair of jeans. I don't remember the car either. It's a Chevy van or the house. I take the opportunity to fill in a few blanks about myself. I'm not the child of millionaires, that's for true. I have no great love of cutting grass, or maybe that one's on Johnny. I've got an excuse. <laughs> I can't cut the grass because I've been in a coma. 
I note the window I must have climbed out since it's the only one with roof access. And for some reason I expected, I expected it to be higher and I'm a little embarrassed, like it's an insult to my manliness that such a puny fall scrambled my brains. When mom opens the door, a chorus of voices cry out, surprise! A makeshift banner hangs across the living room. Welcome home, Chase. A heavyset man about mom's age steps forward and folds me in a crushing bear hug and rubs his knuckles up and down my head. Good to have you back, son. Mom is horrified. Stop it, Frank. He has a concussion. That man, he's my father, lets me go, but he's defiant. Ambrose men can take a few licks, Tina. You're talking about an all-country running back here. Um, ex-all-country running back dad, Johnny Amends. You heard the doctor. Chase can't play football this season. Dopey doctor, the father says. What does he weigh? Only what? Forty? Buck forty soaking wet? And he faces mom. Don't turn him into a wimp like you did Johnny. Thanks. Means a lot his brother said. Why are you here, Frank? My mother's quickly losing her patience. How many times have I asked you not to use your key anymore? This is not your house, and it hasn't been for a long while. Uh, I pay the mortgage on this place, he growls. All at once, the cloud lifts from his face, and he's grinning. Besides, uh, we had to be here to welcome home the conquering hero, Falling off a roof doesn't make me a hero, I mumble. I can't put my finger on it, but there's something about my dad that makes me nervous. It isn't physical. In fact, for a middle-aged guy, he's pretty energetic and spry, despite the paunch and the thinning hair. His smile is totally overpowering. To see him is to want to like him. Maybe that's the problem. I decide he's, he's a little bit too confident that he's... Welcome anywhere, or at least he feels like he's welcome anywhere. And going by mom, he isn't. Not here, anyway. He brought his new family, a wife named Corinne, who doesn't look much older than Johnny, and Helene, my four-year-old half-sister. Mom was right. Helene's definitely not the girl in the blue dress. It's no big deal, I guess, but, you know, I'm disappointed anyway. I was kind of hoping for one thing in my life to be connected to reality. Although I'm meeting them for the first time, I have to remind myself they already know me. And for some reason, they don't seem to like me very much. Corinne hangs back, and the little kid stays firmly attached to her mom's skirt. They look at me like I'm some kind of time bomb about ready to go off in their faces. What did I ever do to that? My father seems to be settling in for a long visit, but Mom's having none of that. Uh, he has to rest, Frank, he says. Doctor's orders. What? He's chopping wood. He's resting. Alone, she insists, in his room where it's quiet, Frank. He sighs. Ants at a picnic. That's what you are. He hugs me again, squeezing slightly less this time. Great to have you back, champ. Sorry it couldn't be more of a celebration, but, you know, nurse Killjoy over here. He inclines his head in his mother's direction. Uh, I stick up for her a little bit. She's right about the doctor. He said I have to take it easy because of my concussion. Concussion, he snorts. When I played football, I got my conk bonk plenty of times. You rub a little dirt on it, and you're good. Corinne appears at her husband's elbow. We're glad you're okay, Chase. Come on, Frank, let's go. I feel like I have to fill the hostile silence that follows, so I lean down to my kid sister. It's a nice doll you got there. What's your name? She shrinks back like I'm about to eat her. Eventually, Dad's gone, taking Corinne and Helene with him. Johnny goes out to meet some friends and Mom orders me upstairs to get a head start on that relaxation that almost caused the Civil War. <laughs> she has to show me which room is mine because I don't remember any of it. 
not the wooden staircase, not the faded floral runner up the center, not the narrow hallway with the low ceiling, not the wooden door with the crack down the center panel. My mother sees me evaluating the damage and is momentarily surprised by my surprise. And then she tries to explain it away. Oh, huh. that was probably my fault. I, I always let you and your friends play sports in the house, and you're too big for that now. <laughs> or the house is too small. Which sports? I asked. Tears came to her eyes. This is hard for her, I can see. Football, soccer, and badminton, you name it. Being in my room is the weirdest experience of all because it's my room. There's no question about that. The walls are covered with newspaper clippings about football teams I start on and lacrosse games I won. There's me in the pictures diving into the end zones and being mobbed by ecstatic teammates, more unfamiliar faces. There are trophies too, shells of them. Chase Ambrose, top scorer. Chase Ambrose, MVP, most yards from scrimmage, team captain, state champions. Wow, I'm really somebody. I only wish I knew who. It takes some doing to build up my courage, but I eventually make it over to the window. And I was wrong before. Oh, it's plenty high. I'm lucky to be alive. It's like I've been parachuted into the middle of someone else's life. Someone who looks exactly like me, it isn't. The doctor's right. Whew, I need to rest. I sit down on the edge of my bed. There's a phone on the nightstand. The screen cracked. I wonder if I had it with me when I fell. I press the home button, but it's dead. There's a charging cable right beside it, and I plug it in. After a couple of minutes, the display lights up, and there I am again with two other kids, complete strangers, although you can tell from the pose that the three of us are close friends. It's a selfie with the kid on my right as a photographer. In the middle, the smallest of the three of us, which is surprising since I'm a pretty big guy. I must be Halloween, or I'm sorry, it must be Halloween because there are little kids in costume all in the background. I'm wielding a baseball bat, holding it high, hanging it off the tip, uh, hanging it off the tip of uh, it mang of its mangled, ruined jack-o'-lantern that I had just evidently smashed. The screen goes dark, and I press the button again. The image of the triumphant pumpkin basher reappears. I can't take my eyes off it. All three of us wear wild, gleeful, unholy, cake-eating grins. What kind of a person am I? That's the end of chapter one. I'm sorry I stumped up a few of those words at the end there. But already the chapter for me was a, a good hook. It had me going because, I mean, what happened? The young man, for whatever reason, crawled out on the roof, fell headfirst down off of his roof uh, and suffered a traumatic brain injury as a concussion lost all his memory, doesn't know who he is, doesn't know who anyone is, or anything. Uh, but he's found some clues, you know. Mom seems to be very uh, motherly, and brother seems to be a loving brother. Uh, Dad seems to be a bit of a schmuck. Uh, <laughs> he's got some friends, and when he looked on that phone, hmm, that to me was something that really kept me going. That wanted... I, I remember when I first read the book, I read five chapters just right off the bat, boom, boom, boom. This, what made me keep going, was wanting to know who those friends were on that picture on his phone. He had a, he was holding a bat and evidently had crushed someone's pumpkin. I don't know. And they're laughing about it. So that really made me curious. So, so anyway, that's that for that. Come back for chapter two. Uh, that'll be in a day or two. And I hope you enjoyed it. Take good care. Bye-bye. Uh,